We're now ready, finally, to implement our new interpreter. So this is the interpreter that takes an expression, an environment, and the current store. And what it needs to return is a result, which is a value and a store paired together. Now, when we're uh, interpreting a number expression, we, of course, want to return a number value with the same number inside. But because we need to return a result, we need to pair it with a store. And since uh, evaluating a number has no effect on the store, we just return the same store that we were given. So this is the complete implementation of the numy case. It just creates a numv, but puts it together using vstar s with the store to get the right kind of result. Uh, when we evaluate an identifier expression, it's very similar. We do the old thing, which is look in the environment to get the value for that uh, variable, um, but then we need to pair it together with the current store. And simply looking up an identifier, again, makes no changes to the store, so we just return the one we were given. Plus, we've already looked at some. It used to be that we would uh, do num plus on the recursive calls to interp, uh, but now we need to send stores in and get stores out. So the code looks like this. Interp the left, get a val left value in store. Interp the right, using the left store, to get a new store for the right and a value for the right. Add the two values up and return the right store out. Multiply is going to be similar. Uh, let's jump on down to boxes. So when we have a box expression, we have a sub-expression that we need to interp. And nothing happens before we start evaluating that sub-expression, so we pass the same store along in there. This interp is going to give us back a value and a store. And it can be any kind of value, and the store can have any sort of changes. Like when we, the, the argument to a box might be a call to a function or it might be getting a box out of a box. It can be an arbitrary expression. Uh, if we call a function, that might actually change the store. And so that's why we need to pay attention to stow v from now on, not stow. Whatever evaluating a did, we want to look at those changes from now on. But we've got a value to put in our new box. Um, we've got a store that we're starting with, and this is the store that we want to allocate space. So let's wish for a function called new loc that takes a store and tells us what's the next location that we can use. So it's a kind of malloc function. It's telling us uh, the first free number that's available. Uh, we'll look at that implementation in a minute. But we get that location back, and let's call it L. So L is the location for the new box. We've allocated that location. Now we need to put this value V inside that box. Um, so the box is going to be at that address. We put at that address the value V to create a new store, new cell, and we add that cell to our current store. Uh, and that's really it. We've got the box that we wanted. We've updated the store to have V at that location uh, recorded in the box, and so we can just return those two pieces. This is how box E returns a box V value, but also puts some other value into the store. Just uh, quickly, uh, our malloc function, a uh, new location, can be implemented by finding the current maximum address in the store and adding one to it. So one more than the current max is clearly going to be an address that we haven't used yet. Max address is just a straightforward recursive function uh, over the list of cells. And with that, we can move on to unbox. Unbox has a sub-expression that we should interp. When we interp, we will get um, a value back and a store back. Now this value for unbox to make sense needs to be a box v. So let's do a type case on it and make sure it's a box v. If it's not a box V, we complain as usual. If it is a box V, then we have a location L. Right? We don't have the value that we want yet. All we have is the place that we should look in memory to find the value. That place is L, the location L. And actually, look in memory, we'll need some new helper function that I'll call fetch. Fetch takes a value, uh, sorry, it takes a location, not a value. It takes a location, and it takes a store, and it looks in that store to get the current value out. So location store to value. And in fact, that value is what we want to return. We just need to pair it together with the current store. Notice that it's stow v, not stow, because evaluating the argument expression, again, may have had some effect. And we want to see that effect when we go look uh, for the current value of a box. That leaves us with set box. We've got two sub-expressions that we're going to interpret both of them. Uh, we need to chain them together, similar to the way that we did for plus. That is, we interpret the first expression give it the current store and get a new store back. That's what we use for the call to the value expression. Get a new value back. That VB value had better be a box. So let's do a type case on it to make sure that VB is a box with some location 
If not, we complain. Uh, but when we get a location, that's the location we want to update in the store. We want to change the store at location L to have the value VV. So we do that by creating a cell that says L is now mapped to VV using override store to add it to our current store. And then because we decided setbox should return this VV as well as putting it into the cell, we just pair that together using vstar s, pair that VV with the updated store, and that's the result of setbox. That leaves us with just the begin form to deal with. Begin's job is to evaluate L, ignore its result, but keep any changes to the store, and then evaluate R and return its result. We could do this in the same way as, as plus and setbox because we have two uh, expressions to evaluate, but we can take a shortcut here. We interp L, get back a new store, uh, and a value that we ignore. And then we just interp R and we don't have to look at its result because whatever that result is, it's what the begin should return. So we interp R with the updated store, it returns some updated value, uh, some value and some updated store, and that's the right answer for beginning.